with the explosives uh, maker Oracle. What do you make of the numbers? Carson, what we've seen in the last few sessions is that any of those companies and that uh, those areas which service the mining area have uh, been under pressure and there are signs that their business have, have been, has been under pressure as well. On Friday we heard from Emico, which came out with a proper downgrade and we've also seen Diploma Group uh, scrapping 244 single rooms which was supposed to be for the fly-in fly-out market for Rio Tinto near the Tom Price uh, project. So more signs that the mining sector is looking quite soft at the moment. We've heard from Orica this morning and this one's an important one because mining makes up around about 75 percent of earnings. We have a look at their three divisions it's mining, Minerva as well as chemicals and if we have a look at M Minerva that's the equipment part of its business. Total EBIT was actually down by one percent so that was softer than our expectations of a rise of 10 percent. Now the chemical division came in line with our expectations we saw a rise of eight percent there but we did see mining down by three percent and we have seen uh, some problems and some issues at the uh, at one of their uh, projects which uh, contributed to that and we did see uh, also Minerva um, up by 4% but we saw extreme softness in the US especially in that second half where we did see volumes down by about 7% there. In terms of the actual profit result they came in at 647 million before one offs and we were expecting 650 million dollars so broadly in line with expectations but we've also seen an impairment of 247 million dollars for that Minerva the equipment division there. It, it has a book value of about $1.5 billion. I think it was partially expected uh, by the market, but I think if we have a look mm. at the result today, really showing some softness c coming through from that mining division, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be too big a surprise there, that impairment uh, slightly expected by the market. That was one of the things we were keeping an eye out for in the result today, mm -hmm. and they are predicting that full year uh, 13, mm -hmm. the current financial year, will be higher uh, than the current result. Mm -hmm. So altogether, that impairment coming through, that's one of the things we were watching for, but mm -hmm. altogether showing some softness coming through from that uh, mining area. QBE shares tanking 11.4% now. Uh, that story was explained to the market about Hurricane Sandy. What about reinsurance? I thought the market was kind of um, buoyed up that some of those uh, Swiss reason and all the rest of it in Europe had bounced off some initial doubt there. It looks like those losses from Hurricane Sandy bigger than expected. So coming in at 350 to 450 million dollars, and that's on top of the problems that we've been seeing in the U.S. with the drought problem as well. Now it does look like catastrophe claims will now be up to 12 percent of net earned premium instead of what was forecast, the 10 and a half percent that QB heat. QBE insurance had left aside and that means a profit downgrade insurance profit margin now expected to be 8% instead of the initial 12% so no, no doubt that we're going to see QBE insurance shares coming under a fair bit of pressure today and the blue scope if I can comment I guess the big question for blue scope today is going to be whether we are going to see a capital raising because this 300 million dollar issue didn't go through in the US but the fact is blue scopes uh, debt is now very low we saw a 600 million dollar capital raising that took net debt debt down to just 384 million dollars we know they're selling non-core assets they've got that JV uh, with Nippon Steel and that means that they're expecting about 540 million dollars worth of proceeds to come in early 2013 from the 50 percent sale of their blue scope coded products division and that pretty much means that their debt is wiped away now the problem here is that this announcement comes at a time when blue scope is still making a loss and they were expecting to come back to a break-even run rate uh, by the end of the year so I guess what the market's really going to be watching for is whether they are getting close to that break-even point which we are expecting in the first half of the year and that means by the end of the year so coming close to that point or whether conditions have deteriorated further because in terms of their debt situation we've seen that 600 million dollar capital raising they're selling off non-core assets and that JV uh, with Nippon Steel as well on which of those two at these levels would be worth making a play on oil search and or Santos, you know, a buy on the dip story, believing this one, of course, is, is hurting them for now, but not necessarily forever. I guess in terms of the growth side of the equation, both Oil Search and uh, Santos both have projects which are coming online in the next few years. Mm. The PNG LNG project is due for startup in 2014, and the fact that we are seeing cost blowouts shouldn't be too much of a surprise. We've seen this being a key theme over the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, the very high Australian dollar certainly not helping the scenario there. But if I was to cho choose an oil and gas company, I'd choose Woodside Petroleum. They're rather conservative in terms of their forecast. They've been doing 
doing a great job. They've got uh, world-class assets, uh, in, in fact, one of the best uh, portfolio of oil and gas assets in the world. So I'd have to stray away from those two because uh, mm. they are due for startup in the next couple of years, but there are some risks associated with right. that and go for the major wood safety.